Hey, hey, people. Raz here. Welcome to the end of the world. I was going to do a video about cannons this week, but in light of certain events, I think it's more fitting to do a video about the 1918 flu. This is one of those strange situations where you can tell that you're living through history. There's a pandemic literally spreading around the globe, the stock market's basically crashing, and we're barely three months into the year and the whole world is at a standstill. You can't even buy toilet paper right now. Because of this, I've started doing a ton of research on pandemics to get an idea of how this one would play out. The closest comparison I could find was the 1918 Spanish flu. In 1918, the world was rocked by one of the most infectious diseases known to man. This flu was way more aggressive, and because of that it spread like wildfire. It had a mortality rate between 3 and 5 percent. No one knows exactly how the virus started. In fact, many believe it could have circulated around the globe years before 1918. Somehow though, it evolved and became even more deadly. It could spread like the regular flu, through breathing, touching, or even touching surfaces an infected person had touched. Once infected, it would take three to five days before you showed any symptoms, meaning you were out spreading the disease without even knowing it. At first, it wasn't taken seriously. Doctors were more concerned about other diseases like measles at the time. That all changed though on March 4th, 1918. A cook at the military base Camp Funston reported to a medical tent with the flu. Throughout the day, hundreds more started to join him. By the end of the week, most of the camp was sick. This basically set off a chain of events that would spread the flu globally in under six months' time. The crowded camps and transient populations of soldiers moving from camp to camp and deploying in and out of Europe caused the disease to rip through populations like wildfire. This is one of the most deadly diseases to hit the earth since the Great Plague. It triggered a reaction known as a cytokine storm, basically. Most flus only kill the old and the young with bad immune systems. However, a cytokine storm would cause it to attack the immune system directly and use your immune system against your own body. This meant that the more healthy your immune system was, the more severe the reaction would be. Cytokine storms cause the white blood cells to flood your body and cause cells to die of necrosis or premature cell death. This led to frothy blood pooling in the lungs until the patient suffocated as the dying cells slowly drowned the patients in their own fluids. This would also cause you to bleed from your eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. Many patients turned blue from the lack of oxygen. Most doctors were drafted into the military to help with the war effort. This led army bases to be safe havens for the virus. The virus was also helped by the fact that the British, French, Americans, Germans, and Russians had all been censoring the press to protect morale for the war effort. Because of this, the only nation reporting on the disease was Spain, which is why it's remembered today as the Spanish flu. Years later, in 2005, a body was exhumed from the Alaskan wilderness. Since it was frozen through, they were able to collect samples to study. The scientists discovered that the Spanish flu was actually just a strain of H1N1. This being from the same flu family which ravaged the world in the 2009 swine flu epidemic. A lot was unknown about the flu back then as well. They didn't have microscopes that could view the disease to tell how it functioned. They also didn't have miracle drugs like Tamiflu or vaccines to help prep your immune system for this kind of reaction. We had no real way to treat it, and were just helping the patients ride it out by treating the pneumonia that occurred after the fact. It spread around the world, from the US to Europe, to the French troops, to the Germans, killed millions in Russia, and at the end of the day took anywhere from 50 to 100 million lives. It spread from the most populous places in the world to the most remote places. In fact, one of the only places it didn't touch was American Samoa. Basically, the governor saw the disease coming and was like, nope, and just shut every single port around the island. At the end of it all, it infected FDR, Woodrow Wilson, the King of Spain, Joseph Joffre, David Lloyd George, John Pershing, Kaiser Wilhelm, Franz Kafka, George O'Keefe, and even Walt Disney. It was basically the perfect shitstorm where everything that could go wrong did. <laughs> to list it all out, we had governments covering up the disease. Everybody had weakened immune systems because of war rationing. We had large transit populations of soldiers and refugees from the war. We had no public hygiene strategy. We had a medical community that didn't understand the disease. We had no good treatments for it. 
and we had a shortage of doctors. And last but not least, let's not forget that the trenches were basically cesspools of flies, rats, and troops all spreading the disease. <laughs> All of this is kind of why I don't believe the coronavirus is going to be as bad as the 1918 flu. Learning from history, today we're restricting travel, stocking up on food and supplies, we have treatments for pneumonia, and while it sounds silly, self-quarantining is actually going to help spread out the flu so as not to overwhelm the healthcare system. It's important to learn from history in moments like this. The good news is, we will likely come out of this in the next three to six months. The best you can do for now is protect the people with weakened immune systems and pre-existing conditions. Eventually, we will build up a herd immunity and no longer be as susceptible to this virus. So for now, all we can do is wash our hands, stay at home, and wait it out. Stay safe out there. See you next time.